China's press is often described as among the most restricted in the world, but that's because you're looking at it using Western standards. Today, I'll give you all a quick introduction into Chinese media and explain the most basic and important difference between the news media here in China and its Western counterpart. Let's get reporting. China is often given the ominous title of one of the most restricted news media scenes in the entire world. In the annual World Press Freedom Index, China is always right at the bottom of the list, and my home country, New Zealand, sits proudly near the top. I've worked in media in both places, so I think I have a pretty unique insight. In 2021's World Press Freedom Index, China ranks 177th out of 180 countries, beating out only Turkmenistan, North Korea, and Eritrea. New Zealand, on the other hand, is celebrated in the top 10, number eight to be exact. But what does press freedom mean, and why should it matter? Basically, the news media in most Western countries is referred to as the fourth estate. That means it has the important role of holding the other three estates, namely the three branches of government, to account. In simple terms, news media in the West is meant to be completely and utterly separate from government, and its main role is to hold the government to account, keeping the public informed and exposing the wrongdoings of those in power. Government is not allowed to influence the news media in any way, shape or form. That's what press freedom means, media that is free from government influence. Well, that's the theory behind it anyway. In the United States, for example, the media has become so politicized that there are literally news channels and publications almost entirely devoted to publicizing the narrative of either of the country's two main political parties. The most obvious illustration of that dynamic is CNN and Fox News, one spouting democratic talking points and the other towing the Republican Party line. Literally all media in the US takes on a political bias, and their content is so polarizing that there exists multiple realities, multiple versions of the truth. And that's without mentioning the huge corporate influence a lot of Western media suffers from, being pushed by big pharma, the arms industry, interest groups, advertisers and donors, all hoping to influence the news to best suit their own agenda. Remember how the tobacco industry tried to convince the world through the media that smoking was safe? You might think such commercial pressure is a thing of the past, but it's still very much happening today. China's media, on the other hand, is best seen as part of the government. Instead of existing as a means for reporters to attack those in power, it's more used as a way to maintain unity, promote good and important news, and keep the population from becoming hyped up over over-sensationalized content of no real importance. Let me explain. China has a huge media industry with 1,810 newspapers, 2,591 radio and TV stations, and a whopping 1,592 TV channels. 162,000 people are employed by newspapers, nearly 1 million by radio and TV, and there are 232,830 accredited journalists. China's online media scene is also thriving, with more than 1 billion internet users and dozens upon dozens of extremely popular video sharing platforms like Bilibili, Toutiao, Kuaishou and Douyin, the original version of the world famous short video app TikTok. Now you know who to blame. China's media scene, while under the guidance of the government, is largely free of government interference, but constantly guided by important rules that prevent the media from becoming a barren wasteland of scandals, drama, sex and chaos. Sure, there are some topics that journalists in China need to avoid. They include anything that might whip up tension between China's 56 ethnic minorities, suggestions that any part of China should be separated, and anything else that might disrupt order. There are 1.4 billion people here, remember. Order and unity is important. One unique aspect I love about China's media landscape is that many of the things that the average person hates about Western media are strictly controlled here. For example, the US has become hugely divided in the past few years along ethnic lines. Media have been allowed to freely stoke that hatred and angst by creating dramatic and over-the-top content that's purely designed to get clicks and sell newspapers. In China, that would be forbidden. 
Terrorist attacks are given frightening levels of power in the West by a news media who literally fulfill the wishes of terrorists by publicizing their violent acts and, in turn, panicking the public. Wall-to-wall coverage is given to even the smallest of terrorism incidents, basically ensuring that any violent group or individual who wants attention can get it. In China, news about terrorist attacks here, however infrequent nowadays, is strictly controlled. Terrorists are not given airtime at all, and the public isn't forced to live life on edge at the behest of violent radicals. No terrorist will become infamous here in China. A tight rein is kept on Chinese media when it comes to the scandalization of international issues too. Media across the country were reminded during the last US presidential election that media commentary must not aggravate over-the-top emotions or hype up public opinion. How impressive is that? When then-President Donald Trump tested positive for coronavirus, contrary to what you might think, Chinese media was reminded to be nice. Regarding Trump's diagnosis, no comments, no hype, and no rejoicing in the misery of others. Can you imagine how much nicer Western media would be if the media was made to keep civil like that? Western media is also filled with content on celebrity scandals, often excessively focusing on people who are, well, let's admit it, far from ideal role models. In China, media are reminded not to do so. Ensure that content which involves actors with unsavory track records doesn't appear. Now, just stop for a minute and imagine going on the internet without having to see the Kardashians on every single news site. Oh, bliss. <laughs> so, going back to the World Press Freedom Index, sure, China's media isn't free when you judge it using Western standards. It's not separate from government, and media doesn't have free reign to just publish or broadcast anything they want to. But that isn't necessarily a bad thing, if you just keep in mind that the world has different countries and different cultures with different ways of doing things. After all, why should everything be judged as good or bad just using Western ideals?